which is coming up in a few weeks. Amen. Women are significant. Yes. We're living in a time now where so many people feel like they're insignificant, not important, not a value. Amen. But come September the 25th, mm -hmm. here at Agape on Saturday the 25th and Sunday, amen, the 26th, amen. We want to invite you 2.30 in the afternoon. And we're going to deal with, amen, being a woman of wisdom, resilience, a woman of vision and purpose. Right. And so those of you who, amen, are here and those who are watching by streaming, we want to make sure that you feel welcome to come. And know your value, amen. Because in these hours that we live it in, God needs you, your family needs you, yes. your community needs you, your church needs you, the hospital needs you. Amen. When we look at the land, what's going on in our land, amen. We need the women of God to stand up. Amen. We thank God for the men of God, but we're helpers. Is that right? Yes. Amen. So I want the women to say this. I am a woman of significance. I am a woman of significance. Amen. You got to say it like you mean to say, I am a woman of significance. I am a woman of significance. All right. Praise God. That's better. Amen. amen. Let's go right into the word of God. We want to start in the book of Matthew. So turn with me to the book of St. Matthew 21, 21st chapter. Amen. And I want you to stand. Amen. And read just, we're going to read just the first few verses. One through four. 
When you have it, say, I'm there. I'm there. All right, praise God. Matthew 21. Matthew 21, and we're going to read 1 through 4. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, then said Jesus to disciples, saying unto them, Go unto the village over against you, and straightway you shall find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them, bring them unto me, and if any man shall aught unto you, you shall say, The Lord have need of them. Yes. And straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying, tell ye the daughter of Zion, behold thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon a donkey and a coat of a foal of a donkey. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. I could have used the other translation, but sometimes people get offended, so amen. So amen. We just said donkey, but y'all know what it does say. There's another interpretation. Not a problem. They're the same animal. Amen. Tragedy to Trump. To be, to trump over any and every circumstance of your life. There's some things that we need to overcome. Well, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave us a preview how to get through some things. The Word of God prophesied over seven, around 700 years before his actual birth that he was going to be coming. The book of Zechariah made it very plain that she's coming to her people. And remember Jesus said he came to his own, but his own received him not. Amen. And he knew that ahead of time, but it didn't stop him from coming. Right. So there's times in our life where you may know that you're going to go through things, but don't stop. Right. Amen. 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 Don't stop believing. Don't stop praising God. Don't stop praying. Don't stop fasting because you don't know what a day is going to bring. And so, as he drew near, he knew that his coming to the end, he was coming soon to the end of his ministry. So, in that sixth verse, because he sent for a man, the, the, the donkey, so that he would fulfill the prophetic word concerning his coming in to Jerusalem. Now, what we need to understand is that there is a position and there's a place that God always wants us to be so that we would, amen, not only grow in our understanding of his plan, purposes, and will, but that we might fulfill it. Right. And so to fulfill God's purpose and plan and will for Christ, he had to be there at the time, the moed of God, which was, in Hebrew, is called an appointed time. And so during this appointed time, it was necessary that he would, amen, today he would drive in or he would fly in because we have what we call the automobile. Yes. But back in their day, they had the transportation of the donkeys or the horses or the camels. Amen. And so he came in on the donkey at the appointed prophetic time that the word of God said in the book of Zechariah, and I believe it's the 10th chapter. Now. Let's go on and let's read that sixth verse. It said, and the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. He brought the donkey and the coat, put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. In other words, uh, they, the palm branches, amen, we know that from Every Easter service, we talk about the palm branches. And so they're spreading the palm branches, amen, just like today people would throw roses out for kings, and, but they use palm branches, amen. And they spread them out, amen. So as he traveled, amen, he would, uh, the, the donkey would uh, walk uh, upon these palm branches. And they did that as a sign of honor and respect and triumph. So there's some things that preceded the final triumph that led to his glory. And we're going to talk about that. Because remember, you go from faith to faith, strength to strength, amen, glory to glory. I'm going to say it again. You go from faith to faith, strength to strength, and glory to glory. And so we're going to see in the ministry and in the life, in the short time that we have, how, amen, there was a pre-glory. 
Amen. If I can say it like that. And we're going to see that in a minute. And so, amen, the multitude, they were honoring him and glorifying, saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. That ninth verse. Amen. That's what they cried. Ho Everybody shout Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And remember that right before his crucifixion, he said, you won't see me again because as they began to reject him and reject his messiahship and that he was indeed the Christ of God. Amen. He was the Messiah. He was Yeshua HaMashiach. He said, you won't. And he told them. He said, the next time you'll see me, you'll be saying, Amen. Barak Adonai. I can't remember all of it, but it means the same thing. Blessed is he. Amen. Barak. Blessed is he who cometh in Adonai in the name of the Lord. So blessed is he that cometh in the name of He said, they shouted and praised him. And he said, you will, you'll say this again. But you won't say it until, I won't hear you say it until you shout it from the earth. Because there's going to come a time when you're going to call me your Messiah. You're going to name me. You're going to claim me. You're going to confess because every knee's going to bow. Every tongue's going to confess that Jesus Christ indeed is Lord to the glory of the Father. So what would happen between the, somebody said in the meantime. In the meantime. Somebody say, in the meantime. In the meantime. Amen. Let's go over here to Matthew 20. Oh, let's finish this up. I'm not done yet. Look at the look at the 10 verse. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So that lets us know that obviously there were some that did not recognize that he indeed was the Christ of God. He was the son of David. He was Yeshua HaMashiach. That amen. He was a son of Abraham. They didn't recognize him. And there's still times in our lives that there's people in your family that don't recognize him. And so it's up to us to, amen, confess him, amen, and to minister to them and allow his life to be seen in and through us. And so they said, who is this? And look at the 11th verse. And the multitude said, this is who? Jesus. This is who? Jesus. This is Jesus. The, come on and say it with me. This is who? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. The prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. He is what? The prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And so they did not know, obviously, some of these people did not know who he was. Because they said, who is this? So I, 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 I want you to let that sink in. Because sometimes you're around people that don't know and don't realize who he is. Let's go to Matthew 26. Amen. And we're going to look at the sixth verse. Amen. Starting there. Now remember, we're talking about from tragedy to triumph. But in the meantime, there's some things that be happening. There's some situations that, amen, may affect your life or the life of your loved ones. All of us have dealt with tragedy, especially during this pandemic. Amen. Some of us, as a matter of fact, we're getting ready, amen, to uh, celebrate the home going of my nephew in a few days. So tragedy touches everybody eventually. If you live long enough, you will face it. But there is, is something that has to, that you have to have that mindset to be able to go through the tragedy to the other side, which is triumph. Amen. Because there's a blessing on the so other side of the tragedy. You may not see it while you're going through it. But if you believe in God and know that God got you, yes. that God loves you, yes. you will triumph. Yes. And so let's take a look at the, um, we're going to start at that sixth verse. Amen. And it says, now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of a very precious ointment. And he poured it, and she poured it on his head as he sat at me. But when the disciples saw it, they were they had indignation, said, to what purpose is this waste? Somebody say, you will never waste nothing on Jesus. You won't waste your prayers. Come on and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You will not waste your, uh, your praise. Come on and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You will not waste your worship. Come on, lift your hands to God. Uh, you will not waste anything you do for God, whether it's giving, whether it's praising, whether it's praising. I'm praising God. I'm work. You will. It's always a hallelujah in your house. Come on and say it's always hallelujah in your house. Amen. You'll never. You, 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 nothing is wasted on the Lord. My meditation 
is not wasted on the Lord. Thy praise is not wasted on the Lord. My glory to God is not wasted on the Lord. My giving and my serving is never wasted. She was serving the only way she knew how. So she poured that oil. Amen. From that alabaster box. I love the way that Cece whining. Am I right? Cece, Cece sings that song. That alabaster box. When you get a chance, you ought to just listen and play and just let that let the words in that song minister to your soul. Because the anointing is costly. Do, do you know the anointing costs something? Is there anybody here that would agree with me that your anointing costs you something? Amen. If, if you suffer with him, you're going to reign with him. There, there's a glory attached to your suffering. There, after this is the glory. Yeah. There's an anointing that's attached to what you've gone through in the midst of serving when it didn't look like you were going to be rewarded. In the, in, in the middle of tragedy when you're still giving God glory and honor. When you're praising him when your heart is broken. Did you praise him when your heart was broken? Did you praise him, amen, when that relationship ended? Did you praise him when you lost your loved one? Did you praise him when that job closed? Did you praise him when your money got funny? Amen. No matter what the tragedy is, there's a triumph on the way. And so she, she pours out the oil on this alabaster, from this alabaster box. Amen. Well, some people had an attitude. And that's sad when you have an attitude because who much is given, much is required. Now, this, the Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, is going to give his life. Don't you think he was worth it? I'm so glad that Jesus didn't let that thing pass. I'm so glad that he said that, that he didn't say like a lot of us, well, Lord, I guess they don't appreciate me. But he checked them. And sometimes we need to be checked. Come on. This God that has done everything for you. Yes, yes. He paid the price. He, they, they, they stretched them wide. They hung them and they what? Stretched them wide. Yes. And he died for you. The ransom, the propitiation, substitute for your sins and mine. Hung up for your hang up. And yet there are people that treat this thing like I'm the blood of Jesus as this is nothing. And it's sad. Yes, it but I'm so glad that the Lord said this. Look what he says. This, look what his answer. When Jesus, because... For what purpose is this waste? For the ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. I'm so glad Jesus responded and said, why trouble ye this woman? For one thing, it ain't your business how she spends all her right, money. All right. For one thing, it ain't your business how she uses her, her the, the, the blessing that she had. That alabaster box itself was worth thousands of dollars in our economy today. That expensive ointment. It wasn't their business how she decided or how she going to use it. Sometimes people get an attitude because God doesn't bless you. Okay. So look at somebody say, how I get blessed? Ain't your business. Ain't your business. Amen. <laughs> because sometimes God's just going to bless you because sometimes God will just bless you because I, what is some, what, what that very famous preacher say? What? Favor ain't fair? Yes. Amen. And it ain't. Because sometimes, see, but everybody don't know how you worship God. Everybody don't know how you went through that situation. Everybody don't understand how you suffered and went through and prayed anyway, gave anyway, did what you were asked to do, even though you know you wasn't going to be respected or honored or even appreciated. So the Lord made it very plain. Look what he says, and I love it. He said, the poor you're going to have always, but you're not going to always have me. See, his time, as a matter of fact, she was preparing for his burial. But they missed it because they're so worried about what she was doing. Amen. See, see, everybody's going to face some kind of tragedy. But your eye, the secret of getting through it is keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. Amen. And then look what it said. For that she had poured this ointment on my body. She did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever the gospel shall be preached to the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman hath done, be told for what? A memorial, a memorial of her, that what she gave. You don't think you're giving counts in God's economy? You don't think that God sees you when you give up your talent, your gift, your sacrifice? Your praise and your worship or whatever you do for the Lord. He, he made sure that they understand that not only did God accept her praise, accept her gift, accept her sacrifice. But he said, wherever the gospels we preach, this gospel, she's going to be included in the gospel. Yeah, amen. amen.
So let's go on. Somebody say, in the meanwhile. Say it again, in the meanwhile. Amen. So let's go to Matthew the 17th chapter. Hallelujah. So let's flip back a few pages. Matthew the 17th chapter. God loves you. You are more important to God than you even realize. Your gift, your sacrifice, and even the fact that if you suffer with him, you reign. Because many are the afflictions of the righteous, yes, but the Lord will deliver you out of yes. all. But he said, that, listen to what he said in his word. He said, I'm the Lord, I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too what? Hard for me. God will bring you through. Yes, amen. He, amen. He let yes, us know that his right arm will rescue us. Is that right? Lord, yes. yes, he is a, he is a righteous God. He knows every situation and circumstance that you go through. He sees your uprising, your yes. down city, your going in, your coming out. He knows the way that you take. He knows what's going to happen in two months, three months, yes. the next day. Yes. Amen. And he's with you because Jesus promised, I'll never leave you. No will I forsake you. I'll be with you what? Always to the end of the age. So in Matthew 17, amen. Somebody said mountaintop glory. Let's start at the first verse. And after six days... Jesus took Peter and James and John, his brother, and bringeth them into a high mountain apart. And he was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun. And his raiment was white as light. And, and so he changed and transformed himself right in front of these three, the inner circle. Somebody say the inner circle. Yeah. See, there's some things that you may go through. A lot of people you can't take with you or bring with you to certain now. places Come in on. the spirit. Because yeah. everybody ain't, ain't trying to get where you're going. Right. Everybody don't have an understanding of the vision and the divine purposes that God has for your life. Everybody don't understand what God is doing. And, and so, but Peter, James, and John had a special relationship with Jesus and, and bringing them with him let us know and signify that God had something attached to the divine purpose of them being there. We knew that Peter was going to be, amen, one of the, he said, Peter, after you converted, strengthen your brothers. We know that James and John were called the sons of thunder. Yeah. James would be martyred, amen. And John would write that great book of the apocalypse. Mm. So they had a reason to see what God was about to show them. Because God will show everything everybody, everything that he's doing in your life. Right. There's a secret things that God has. So let, let's take a look. Look what it says here. Amen. And he be, and they, they, when they saw this, and behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it's good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make three tabernacles, one for three, thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. I, I submit to you, uh, Peter was close, but not close enough. Mm -hmm. Amen. Peter was close. He was trying to find out where Jesus was going with all of this, but that's not the plan of God. It wasn't about the tabernacle, amen, which was a place of, of God's presence, the Shekinah, because God had something more, because this in the meanwhile, God was still doing something. But Peter was trying to understand. Because see, remember, Peter is the one that got the revelation that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And, and so his spirit is searching, what does these things mean? So he just said, well, let's make a tabernacle. But God, amen, was not about that tabernacle on the earth. The next tabernacle that God was going to show Peter and him, that God himself will be our tabernacle. That the temple, that we're going to be in a place with him where we won't need a, a, a temple. We won't need a physical church. We won't need, because he himself will be the temple. Yes. And so while he's speaking these things, amen, behold, amen, as Peter was speaking these things, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed him. Mm -hmm. And behold, a voice out of the cloud said, which said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were afraid. But Jesus said, it came and he touched them and said, arise and be not afraid. Because faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing by the word. So the father was establishing, this is my son. In the meanwhile, while all of these things are going on right now. The, the, see, the, this is a foretaste of glory divine. Uh, what, 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 when he came into Jerusalem, it was a foretaste of glory divine. It was the coming of the Messiah, coming, amen, as a foretaste of glory divine. Mm -hmm. 
But then, amen, and on the mountaintop, it was a foretaste of glory divine. When the woman poured the oil from the alabaster box, it was a foretaste of glory divine. Mm -hmm. Amen. So let's go to Matthew 27. And we're going to see that, amen, in your life, there's going to be some times. Have you ever had great victories, y'all? And you say, oh, I'm so glad God did it for me. And you gave God some high praise. Yeah. Because you know God brought you out over, uh, up, and yeah. through. And you're yeah. magnifying him. Amen. And you're glorifying him. Yeah. And you're worshiping him. Mm -hmm. And then something happens. So let's go to Matthew 27. Amen. And Matthew 27, we see here, praise God. And we're going to start at the 30. Let's start at the 38th verse. The 37th verse. Because there's something that took place before. And, 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 and let me just say this. There are times in your life you don't always understand what God is up to. Is that right? I, I don't always, I, and I, I don't claim to always understand what God is up to. But there were two thieves, amen. And, and, and these thieves, are, 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 these thieves were trying to figure out, and I, and I love it, because sometimes you'd be surprised who the people are that's trying to figure you out. There's some people that's trying to figure you out. But one of the thieves didn't understand why God was going, why Christ was going through what he was doing. And he simply said, well, if you be the, if you be the Christ, save us and you. Now, did he deserve that? But the other thief, what did he say? He said, Lord, remember me. Somebody say, Lord, remember me. Lord, remember me. There, there, he's getting ready now to go unto the, the death. He's going to die on that cross. Not really was, I mean, he was crucified. He was going to be beaten. As a matter of fact, he had already been beaten at this point in time. He was in pain that Isaiah said, we can't even recognize him. He was more than any man ever lived. Mm -hmm. They beat him to the place that he didn't even look human. And yet, Jesus heard mm -hmm. that thief say, this day, mm -hmm. you're going to be with me in paradise. Yeah. It's a foretaste of glory divine. Mm -hmm. How many of us could have went through that? I submit to you, none of us could have endured. He Amen. became that ransom, that holy lamb of God, that sacrificial lamb. And yet, Jesus responded in the midst, as a matter of fact, I submit to you, he had to stop dying for a minute so he could say something to that man, because he was already in the throes of death. Yeah. But he said, this day, you're going to be with me in paradise, a foretaste of glory divine. Amen. This day, he believed in Christ. And as all, many of us that believed in him, we, this, it ain't over yet. Look at somebody say, it ain't over yet. It ain't Whatever over you've yet. been going through, it ain't over yet. Don't count yourself out. So let's go to Matthew 28. I, I love this. Matthew 28. So we see what, what happened during that, in the meantime, in those three days. What happened in those three days? Because remember, he went down to hell. And he did what? He preached to the spirits that were in hell. Yeah. And while he was down there in hell, he took those. For one thing, he got back the keys of death yeah. and the grave. He spoiled principalities. We're going to see that in a minute. Mm -hmm. He let the devil know, amen, that grave, you ain't got no hold on me. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So Matthew 28, it said, in the end of the Sabbath, as he began to dawn during the first day of the week, came Mary Madeline and the other Mary to the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came, and he did what? Roll back he stone. did what? Roll back the he stone. rolled back the stone. It sounds like some uh, a triumph. This time it's a different kind of triumphant entry. entry. This time, amen, this, this entry is not like the other entry where he was an earthly triumph. He was coming in just to declare that he was indeed the son of God. And it was necessary to fulfill the prophecy that here comes your king riding on a coat. But now we're seeing that he's getting ready to go back and he's taking captive those that died in faith. And so look what he said. His countenance, talking about the angel, was like lightning and his raiment was white as snow. And for fear, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not, for I know that you seek who? Jesus. Somebody shout his name. Jesus. Jesus, which was crucified. 
He is not here. His ministry on earth, that earthly ministry is over. Now there's something greater. There's a greater, greater thing that God is about to do. For he is what? And as he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell, amen, where, yes, the place where he once lay. And he said, go and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you in Galilee. There shall you see him. I've told you. In other words, every time that the Lord, amen, every word that was spoken about him, it was confirmed, amen, not only by, by the prophets, but by, amen, the angels, and soon by the disciples or the apostles. Let's go, amen, to that ninth verse. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them. Hallelujah. And he said, all hell. So they lauded him. Amen. Jesus, amen, came before them. He had visited what? He was on the cross, but death and hell and the grave could not hold him down. Somebody said that they couldn't hold him back. They couldn't hold him down. Amen. He triumphed over them. And then Jesus said to them, be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and they, they shall see me. They shall do what? See me. And then let's go down to the 18th verse. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power. Somebody say all power. All power. See, he triumphed. To, to triumph, you've got to have all power. God now is giving him complete dominion. He said all power. Hallelujah. Is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you when? Always. Always until the end of the age. Amen. Well, let's run over here to Colossians and we're going to close here in Colossians and Peter. But I just want you, amen, rather, first John. But I want you to get this that. Yes, there's some tragedies that have happened. There's some heartaches that may have happened. But how did, how did the Lord win over every situation? How did he triumph over every pain? Let me say, he knew who he was. Amen. The Father knew who he was. The Father confirmed, this is my beloved son, in whom I am what? Is he well pleased with you, saints? Is he, amen. Has he accepted your worship and your praise? I submit to you, when you know who you are, and you know who you belong to. But in Colossians 2, amen, let's look at the 12th verse. Glory to God. Amen. Buried with him in baptism. Talking about you. We were buried with him in baptism. Vicariously, every time, every one of us that were baptized, that were buried with him in baptism. Where also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. The Holy Ghost has an operation. He did an operation in you. Amen. And, and there's something about when the Holy Ghost operates on you. So when you went down in faith in that water, vicariously, you came up. You died in your sin because when you were baptized under that water, that was signifying the death and burial of Jesus Christ. But then you rose within Christ. And when they brought you out that water, that was symbolic of his resurrection. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who have raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, have he what? Quicken together with him, having forgiven you all your trespasses. Yes. Amen. All your trespasses. Mm -hmm. That means that there's not one sin that's not under the blood. All right. All your sins are under the blood. Amen. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Amen. That's why we sing that song at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. Having spoiled. Now look what it said. Having did what? Spoiled. Spoil. Principalities and powers. That's talked about the rank and file of demonic powers that Christ, amen, he triumphed over them. Even Satan, the devil, could not stop him. Amen. The devil, Lucifer, could not stop him. When it says he tried, look what it says here. I want you to really get this. Amen. Spoiling principalities and powers. He made a show of them what? Openly. openly. He did it when? Openly. Triumphing. There's that word. How did he do it? He triumphed over them. Yeah. Amen. 
Hallelujah. In it, in that situation. And when he went down to hell, he let the devil know you ain't got nothing coming. He let the devil know you can, your work has been canceled. Your assignment is over. You will never be able to keep my children in bondage to sin again. All they have to do is put their trust in me, believe in me. All they have to do is know that I am their Lord and confess me. Because why? Jesus triumphed over every, because remember, Adam gave over the access of the earth, took, took dominion over us, mm -hmm. and had us in bondage and the fear of death. So what did Jesus go down there and do? He got the title deed back. Mm -hmm. right. Amen? Amen. He got the title deed back. Amen. Fulfilling what God's original plan and purpose, mm -hmm. that mankind would dwell with him, and that mankind would live for him. And that we would be children of the Most High God. So having spoiled principalities and power, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. So let no man therefore judge you at what you eat or drink or in respect of holy days or new moons or the Sabbath. There were only a shadow of things to come, for the body is of Christ. Now let's go to our, fat, our last scripture in 1 John. 1 John 5. Saints, you will never be defeated. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I'll never be defeated. I'll never, never be defeated. defeated. See, you got to confess that for yourself. Amen. Do you, have you confessed that you'll never be defeated? Amen. Amen. Well, what does John say? St. John, I mean, 1 John, y'all. 1 John 5 and the fourth verse. For whatsoever. Born of God. Whatsoever. Now, why do you think he said whatsoever instead of whosoever? I think it includes not only you, but what you have done, what you have brought forth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So whatsoever mm -hmm. is born of God, overcometh the world. And this is the what? The this is what? Victory. This is what? Victory. This is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. So who is he that overcometh the world? But he that what? Believeth. Somebody say he that believeth. He that believeth. He that what? Believeth. So you can triumph over that situation by believing. The just shall live by faith. You can triumph over that addiction by just simply believing. You can triumph over that problem, that circumstance, that financial issue. Amen. No matter when the, how the enemy, what the word God said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the what? Spirit of the Lord does what? Lift up a stand against it. What the word of God said, no weapon formed or what? Against you shall what? No weapon formed against you shall what? You know why I won't prosper? Because if you believe, amen, if you believe in the Son of God, you are overcome. Because look, I'm going to read it one more time because I really want y'all to get it in your spirit. Say, come on and say it with me. For whatsoever, whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Now there's another scripture that says, thanks be unto God that causes us to triumph. Come on and give God praise. Thanks be unto God. Are you thankful? Come on, say, Lord, I'm thankful. Lord, I'm thankful. Lord, I'm thankful. Come on, say, Lord, I'm thankful. Lord, I'm thankful. Lord, I'm thankful. Because just like He tried over that situation, what do you, what do you need to get the victory over? Whatever you need to get the, whatever's trying to hold you back, hold you down, keep you in bondage, keep you blocked and stopped, keep you from going forward in the things of God. I want you to know. This day, you can triumph over by simply having faith in God. So let's make this declaration. Lord God Almighty, I thank you right now that I'm a believer, Lord. And you said to the believers that we overcome by the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. And we love not our lives until death. So I thank you, Lord, 
that I have victory today because I am an overcomer. My victory is in the name of Jesus because it's in you, Lord. I live and I move and I have my being. I glorify you, Lord. I magnify you, man. I lift you up, Lord God, and I exalt you because you are my God and my King. You are my savior. You're my, savior. You're, my healer. You're my healer. You're my provider. You're my provider. You are everything, you are everything I, need. I need. You give me peace that surpasses understanding. I guard my heart by your peace. And I'm grateful, Lord, because you caused me to triumph through Christ. My Lord, my Savior, my God. And my king. my king. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Come on and clap your hands. Oh, Come on and give him glory. Hallelujah. Come on and bow your fire. Open your mouth and give God glory. Come on and bless his name. Come on, bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 If you want to be a victim, you got to open your mouth and give God praise. If you want to be an overcome, open your mouth and give God glory. Jesus said, be blessed. Amen. Keep the joy. Amen.